dead to doubt, dumb to discouragement, and blind to impossibilities. That's a motto I strive to live by, and it's something I believe Dr. King carried out and would encourage others to do so. As I look across this room, I am filled with so much hope because I know I am looking at young men and young women who are going to continue to carry out Dr. King's legacy. Remember, no matter where you come from, what your background is, or how old you are, each and every single one of you has the potential to leave a positive mark on this world. And so again, I am so grateful to be here tonight. And today what we're going to do is celebrate the life and legacy of Dr. King. Let us bow our heads uh, for a word of prayer. We come with celebratory hearts on today. We come boldly before your throne of grace, thanking you for life, health, and strength. As we celebrate the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., we are reminded of his courage, his boldness, his unwavering commitment to, the, to see the lives of our brothers and sisters change forever. We are grateful for his work and his spirit, which lives through us even to this day. We are reminded through God's word that our love must be sincere, hate what is evil, and cling to what is good. Today we remember his life, even in death there was victory. We ask for your grace and your mercy to be upon us throughout this program. We pray for all who are under the sound of my voice. We pray for lives to be changed, minds to be renewed, and hearts to be impacted forevermore. We ask all these things in the precious name who created us and the one who keeps us from falling. Let every heart in this place say amen. I will say this, um, 32 years of, of celebrating and commemorating the, the life and service of Dr. King is something very special. Uh, many of you may remember that uh, back in, uh, just 37 years ago in this country, it wasn't always popular, actually, to have a King holiday. Uh, so many people in this room had to fight uh, to make sure that nationally, that this day would indeed uh, be a nationally recognized holiday. And um, uh, to know that we were ahead of the curve because of the leadership of our great city council there, uh, city council members then, uh, led, of course, by um, uh, Councilman W. Cromarty, uh, that this um, has become a, a standard event. And to see so many of our citizens uh, come out to not take a day off, uh, not only take a day off, but to come out and commemorate uh, what it means to be a Colombian, what it means to be a South Carolinian, what it means to be an American, uh, is, uh, is incredibly important and, uh, and, and humbling. I do have the uh, responsibility of, of certainly recognizing our members of city council, uh, our mayor pro tem, uh, Divine, uh, Councilman uh, Ed McDowell, Councilman Daniel Rickman, Councilman Howard Duvall, uh, Councilman Sam Davis, um, and uh, those of you who don't know Will Brennan yet, Will Brennan is a new member of city council, which means he also gets responsibility for all of the pothole phone calls. Uh, he gets responsibility for all the water sewer phone calls. So I'm going to give you Will's uh, cell phone number before we leave here. Uh, uh, but Councilman Will, Will Brennan, we've been joined, of course, by the chairman of our uh, county council, Paul Livingston. Uh, see the chairman of our, of our school board, uh, Jamie uh, Devine, our wonderful chiefs of, of both the fire department, uh, Columbia Richmond Fire Department, Chief Jenkins, and, and Chief Skip Holbrook of the police department, our superintendents uh, of, of, of education. Uh, both Superintendent Livingston and, 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 and Livingston Witherspoon, and um, you don't even look alike. Uh, with, with a, Witherspoon and, and Davis, uh, thank you so much for, your, for the great educational leadership. Uh, Adair Burroughs, a candidate for, for Congress. I think we had at least one um, president, presidential candidate here. Uh, South Carolina is a road to the White House, y'all, so we had a whole lot of folks uh, here asking for your votes here today. I know we had Tulsi Gabbard here today, but all the candidates, almost all of them, right here in Columbia, South Carolina today, paying the people of South Carolina the respect of asking for their votes. Um, it's important because we know that the, the power of the ballot is something that well, we've fought and, and many people have, have, have marched, uh, bled and died for. And it's something that we can never take for, for granted. Young people, uh, we need you to make us a promise that you will always vote. We're not going to tell you who to vote for. That's your call. Uh, you decide who you're going to vote for, but you make sure that when you turn 18 uh, that you register to vote 
and that you always vote your conscience, vote for men and women who support the things that you believe in, who support the things that mean something to your community. Uh, it's, a, it's a treasured right that we believe uh, is, is personified indeed on, on this day. Uh, my friend Seth Rose, I'm not sure if I recognize you earlier. I got, I got a note here, but I, I looked right over you. Um, our state representative who, who represents this district and, and did so ably so well on county council for, for many moons. Have I missed any other elected officials or appointed officials? Make sure I didn't, I didn't miss anyone else. Uh, I want to say I see a number of our neighborhood uh, presidents. Uh, the city is a, is, a, is a collection of great people and great families who make up great neighborhoods, and great neighborhoods make a great city. Uh, so I want to thank the men and women who do the hard work on the ground every single day, keeping our communities together and creating places where these young people can grow up and live up to their God-given potential. We know that you can do great things. We expect great things from you. We don't want B's and C's. We want A's. We want you to do amazing things that we know you're able to do. And that's what today is about, celebrating your accomplishments thus far and knowing that this is only a beginning, uh, that activism without action is just a conversation. We want you to go out and do great things because we know what you're made of. We know what you come from. We know what you come from. So it's a long way of saying welcome. Welcome to Columbia, South Carolina. We're not too famously hot today, uh, but, but, but we're still Columbia, and we're a place that since March 17, 1786, uh, a place uh, uh, placed here, the first cap planned capital city in the United States on the, on the tail of plantation where the saluted and broad rivers met to form the Congaree fertile soil uh, where um, the darkness of America's path, past has led us to the challenging present that we still face in, in this country. But we know that this is still the greatest democratic nation in the history of the world. And our, our future is bright, but it will only be bright if we're intentional about making it bright. Thank you all. God bless you. God keep you. Good afternoon. Uh, protocol been set. Thank the mayor for that excellent speech. I'd like to thank you for coming out and like to welcome you to the Martin Luther King Jr. neighborhood. Uh, welcome to our community. I hope that you enjoy yourself today. And um, I'd like to thank uh, the uh, Martin Luther King um, Park uh, staff for hosting this and for getting all the seats and everything arranged. I'd like to thank the other members of the uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Neighborhood Association. If there are any members of the association, would they please stand as members of the association. Thank you so much for your hard work in keeping the Martin Luther King Jr. Neighborhood well. So welcome, sit back, listen, learn, and let's do more than just come out to commemorate Martin Luther King Day. One of the things that Dr. King fought so hard for was the right to vote. From Selma to Montgomery, the fight was to vote. This is 2020, this is an election year. Make sure in November that you do go out and that you do cast your vote because many have died for us to have the right to do this. So without further ado, on behalf of the mayor and city council, uh, Dr. Bambi Gaddis would like to make a proclamation um, presentation today. Good, uh, good evening. Um, Regardless of your um, spiritual leaning, um, before I say these brief comments, I want to share something. You know, young people watch all kinds of things on television. You know, whether it's Netflix or whatever gets their fancy up. I have a grandson who I believe is in here somewhere, and we were uh, coming down the street, and he had some interesting things to say, and I had to remind him that it's been by God's grace and mercy that you have an opportunity to pursue many of the dreams that you talk about on a regular basis. And um, so I would encourage you, you know, as we sit around and share family time, that you uh, might take a few moments to view a, a film that I witnessed recently called Overcomer because it speaks to why uh, Ms. Armstead uh, asked me to share with you about Joy Holman. Joy Holman was an inspiration to not only many people, but to children throughout this country and throughout this community. Overcomer is a story of one young black woman, young black girl, who had many problems of abandonment, et cetera. 
I won't tell the storyline, but what I'll tell you is that the man that ended up coaching her knew in his head that he was going to be coaching this phenomenal basketball team, only to find out that that was taken away from him. And he was placed in a situation where he ended up with w only one student who showed up to compete or to try out for track. He and she ended up winning the state championship. So it goes to show that it's not about how many, it's about how one person and one student who has his head on straight and who has the desire to achieve can make it happen. So the purpose today is to commemorate Joy Holman. During 2017, a local fitness magazine, it was called Fit Columbia, and the Midlands Anchor honored local women in fitness with a monthly feature celebrating their contributions in our Midlands community. These women were believed to be the best of the best in health and wellness industries. The women were local, small business owners, they were active in their communities, and they had a minimum of five years experience. The February feature of that magazine commemorated Joy Holman. Joy Holman was head coach of the 30 time, and I think maybe 31 time, world champion Double Dutch Forces, which has a history of many athletic tributes. Joy not only played professional basketball, but she also played volleyball, softball, she ran track, and in addition, she was the team captain and MVP of all of those teams at some point. Her prestigious athletic abilities earned her a scholarship at Benedict College. Not only was she an athlete, she was an artist, and she received a scholarship in honor of that talent. She was born in Manhattan, New York, but moved to Lexington, South Carolina when she was only 13 months years old and she lived with her grandmother. She, growing up, she stated that she had never eaten in a restaurant. That changed her senior year of high school when she won a free dinner at a fancy restaurant after she won, not for Double Dutch, but for an art contest. The portrait that she won the dinner for was a charcoal drawn uh, pictation of birds who were wearing gas masks. And it was, they were there to symbolize pollution. In addition to this award, she also drew cartoons for her high school newspaper at Lexington High School. Joy explained that her love of coaching as they began early on, and she talked about how sports were her way out of getting out of the house. I can testify to that. She would only go to church, school, and then it was time for sports. She wanted children and young people to do what they loved. She wanted to support them in any way she knew how. And that is why, although she never practiced double dutch jumping, she agreed to coach the team. At first, she was hesitant, but it was the group of teenagers that desired to jump rope and needed a coach where she overlooked her own personal desires and took them on. She explained that she watched the practices and it won her heart. And 31 years later, she was still doing it. So just a final few notes about Joy. For those of you that didn't know her favorite food, she said her favorite food was chicken, cornbread, broccoli, spinach, and mostly southern food. She loved eating at Lizard's Thicket. They asked her, do you have any current goals or resolutions? And she said, I try to be the best that I can be with everything that I do. I strive to be in the best health and pray for my friends and my family and my team for their success. Currently, I'm trying to eat healthier and work out a lot. I'm teaching physical education, but not being healthy, and so I need to change that, don't we all? So in closure, it said, she said, what is the quote that you live by? She said, it takes a village to raise a child. My grandmother and all of her 12 kids raised me, and that is what makes me want to give back. 
So it's the reason that I'm still coaching. Get up and move. I wanted kids to be more active, to promote healthy activities, and to promote more than that, a spirit of camaraderie and commitment. And so it is on this day, on Martin Luther King's celebration, that we celebrate the legacy of Joy Holman and all that she brought to this community. We will remember her always. Is there a representative for Joy to, re to receive her proclamation? Little Joy, <laughs> would you come on up? You know, we dedicated Joy Day back on uh, May 26th um, in 2019, uh, thanks to Councilman Egg McDowell. And so through him and City Council and the mayor, um, we now take this time today to give this proclamation from our Honorable Mayor Steve Benjamin and the Columbia City Council. There's a lot of whereas and hereas and that, so I'm not going to read all that to you today. But it says, now therefore, I, Steve K. Benjamin, Mayor of the City of Columbia, along with my fellow members of the Columbia City Council, do hereby proclaim Sunday, May 26, 2019, as Joy Holman Day. Here we go, little Joy. If she's shy, she doesn't want to think. Thank you all. Thank you for coming to our community. Take a look around, ride around, and enjoy yourself today.
Thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is with great excitement that I present this evening the top parks and schools in this year's Martin Luther King Jr. Food Drive. Annually, the City of Columbia Parks Facilities, as well as every school in Richland School District 1, collect non-perishable food items for donation to support the Harvest Hope Food Bank. Proceeds from the food goes directly into the community in which these entities serve. We are pleased to announce that the collaborated efforts resulted in over 8,000 pounds of food being donated to Harvest Hope. Tonight I will announce the top parks and schools and as I call your names, if you would please come forward to be recognized. For the city parks, in second place, we have Greenview Park with 207 pounds being donated. And in first place this year, we have a two-way tie raising 281 pounds each. We have Lorick Park and Martin Luther King Jr. Park. For our Richland One schools in third place with 793 pounds, Southeast Middle School with Ms. Inga Ferguson as principal and being represented tonight as well, accompanying Ms. Ferguson, Mr. Oliver Thompson, and Dolores Goodwin. In second place, with 808 pounds, Metafield Elementary School, Lisa Davis, principal. And our reigning champs again this year, Burton Pack Elementary School, with 2,056 pounds, Dr. Sarah Smith, principal. Ladies and gentlemen, please again give these, uh, these award uh, recipients here a round of applause and thank each and every one of them for their participation in this year's event. And in closing, just wanted to leave you with a quote, a selfless quote. Do things for people not because of who they are or what they do in return, but because of who you are. Thank you so much and have a great evening. All right, so a moment a lot of you parents have been waiting for. Now it's time to honor our um, our honorable mention category, and we have eight students in that. You guys ready? All right, let me pull up the list. All right, honorable mention, Jasmine Alexander Coleman Westwood High School. Let's give her a big round of applause. Now, let me explain. These students are nominees who are being recognized for their community service efforts and contributions to the community. Again, when your name is called, come up and you're going to take a great picture. All right, next up we have Taylor Bloomfield Spring Valley High School. <laughs> Kaylee Bright South Aiken High School. Karen Crawford, Blythewood High School. Jalen Jennings, White Knoll High School. Alyssa Milbauer, Sumter High School. Madison Pollock, Dutch Fork High School. And last but not least, Jordan Ward Keenan High School.
All right, and now for the recognition of our scholarship winners in the elementary school, middle, high school levels. And as your names are called, we're asking each student to please come forward and receive your, your what would we call that? A nice little plaque, right? Yeah. All right, first up for elementary winner. Are you guys ready? It is first place, Jackson Singleton, fourth grade Center for Knowledge. so handsome, I love it. All right, middle school winners, y'all ready? All right, exciting. Third place, Darius Moy, eighth grade, Wilson Hall. <laughs> then second place, Cayenne Chavis Rutledge, seventh grade, Southeast Middle School. And first place goes to Justice Sumter, sixth grade, Kelly Mill Middle School. All right, next up we have our high school winners. Third place, Michael Washington, 11th grade, South Carolina Association of Independent Homeschools. Second place, Sierra Sumter, 11th grade, Ridgeview High School. And then first place, we have Nia Burton, 12th grade, Dreer High School. All right, can we give everybody a big round of applause again? So many people are so proud of what you did. Y'all, this is just the beginning. Yes, if we can get a standing ovation, I love that. What they are doing is amazing. So I get the honor of introducing our keynote speaker for tonight, Dr. Bobby Donaldson. Now, as a native of Augusta, Georgia, Dr. Bobby Donaldson serves an associate professor of history and is the director of the Center for Civil Rights History and Research at the University of South Carolina. He received his undergraduate degree in history and African-American studies from Wesleyan University in Middletown, Connecticut, and his PhD in American history from Emory University. Presently, he serves as the lead scholar and director for the Columbia SC-63. It's an amazing documentary project that examines the struggle of civil rights and social justice in Columbia and around the state of South Carolina. During Dr. Donaldson's academic career, he served as a Benjamin E. Mays Andrew Mellon Fellow, as an editorial assistant for the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Papers Project at Emory and Stanford Universities, as a Thurgood Marshall Dissertation Fellow and a visiting assistant professor at Dartmouth College and as a fellow of the W.E.B. Du Bois Institute for African and African American Research at Harvard University. Dr. Donaldson is a recipient of many awards, which you probably can uh, understand why, including the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Social Justice Award in 2016. In 2018, he received the South Carolina Governor's Award in Historic Preservation and the South Carolina Governor's Humanities Award. And y'all, that's just to name a few. Dr. Donaldson's memberships include the Association for the Study of African American Life and History, the Organization of American Historians, the Southern Historical Association, the South Carolina Archives and History Commission, the Editorial Board of the University of South Carolina Press, the South Carolina African American Heritage Commission, the South Carolinian Society, the NAACP, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity, the Sigma Pi Phi Fraternity, and the Wesleyan University of Board of Trustees. I'm not sure how he has time for all of it, but he does. Let's welcome Dr. Bobby Donaldson. Thank you very much, Sullivan, for the introduction. To Mayor Benjamin, members of City Council, Richland County leaders, to Ms. Baskins and the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Foundation Committee, to Ms. Clark and the Martin Luther King Jr. Neighborhood, to the staff of the Columbia Parks and Recreation Department, to all members of elected office and all those who aspire to elective office, to the president of the NAACP of Columbia, Ms. Ovita Glover, to all of our students and to all of you. As a professor of history, 
I am honored and humbled by the invitation to be with you this afternoon. We assemble in this park, this park, to honor and to remember the life of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., a leader of extraordinary courage and vision who left us an enduring message of resistance, of justice, of equality, and redemption. Redemption, how appropriate and ironic it is that this program takes place in this part, this part, a flat land along Rocky Branch Creek, a symbolic space once in the minds and memories of some in this room, a place of division and restriction, now a site of redevelopment, recreation, and transformation. We gather in this park, a meeting ground in the valley. This park, to the east, Millwood Avenue, to the west, the University of South Carolina, to the south, Shandon, to the north, Waverly. And here we come together, hailing from every direction, many experiences, and many backgrounds, to celebrate the life of a drum major for justice, a brilliant young preacher who used his eloquent voice and his intellectual gifts and marched into battle against injustice. We gather in this park where there is on the edge of these grounds an extraordinary memorial called the Stone of Hope, a memorial dedicated in 1996, led by the JCs, the NAACP, the National Council of Negro Women, churches, students, schools, all gave money for bricks to build a monument honoring Dr. King. It was not easy. Some thought it was hopeless, but others persisted. A stone of hope. We will hew out of a mountain of despair. A stone of hope. We will hew out of a mountain of despair. A stone of hope. We will hew out of the mountain of despair, a stone of hope. If anyone knew the history of Dr. King, you would know that he was emphatic, that he was simply one voice, one person in the movement. It was September 30th, 1959. Dr. King looked at a photographer and stood for a photo. That photo is now on display in the rear of this gymnasium. It was taking place at First Calvary Baptist Church. Dr. King was 30 years old, and he had come to Columbia for a meeting of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. It was a conference organized by a funeral home director named I.S. Levy and a Methodist minister named Matthew McCullough and also an extraordinary civil rights leader named Ella J. Baker. Ms. Baker came to Columbia to plan this meeting. And Dr. King was a featured speaker. When they came from nearly every corner of this nation, at the Township Auditorium and First Calvary Church, they came here to discuss inequities in education and call for federal intervention in schools that practice racial discrimination. They also came to discuss inequities in voting and said, we will commit all of our resources to ensuring that everyone who is qualified to vote will have the power and the ability to vote. But while they were here, they also gathered for a banquet to honor Dr. King. Now remember, this is 1959. He is 30 years old. He said, I am the, of the mind that we are about to witness an awakening in this nation. 
an awakening led by young people. September 1959. And Dr. King said, I want you also to know that this movement is not simply about me. I'm just the pilot of the movement. There is no journey without the grounds crew. And tonight, we celebrate the grounds crew. He repeated those same words in 1964 when he received the Nobel Peace Prize. He said, I accept this award on behalf of the nameless men and women who are willing to die for righteousness sake. Their names will never be in any history book. Their names will never be in who's who. But one day, men and women will know and children will be taught that there live in this world people who are willing to suffer for righteousness. So today, as we honor the life and legacy of Dr. King, we need not travel to Birmingham or Selma or Montgomery or Washington, D.C. We can just drive around this neighborhood, drive through King Park and Waverly and see history that matters. As we honor Dr. King, the champion of voting rights, and as we mark the 60th anniversary of the Voting Rights Bill, we are reminded today of a young man who lived in this community named George Elmore. George Elmore lived at 907 Tree Street. His Tate Green Street looked back down the road. He operated a store at 2313 Gervais Street. And George Elmore simply wanted to vote. And in August of 1946, when he tried to vote in the Democratic Party, he was told that Negroes were not permitted to vote. So George Elmore secured the help of a local attorney named Harold Bulware who lived in Allen Benedict Court. And they filed a lawsuit called Elmore v. Rice. And George Elmore was successful in breaking down racial discrimination in voting in South Carolina. He was successful, but he suffered indignity upon indignity. George Elmore of this community lost his store, lost his home, lost his wife and some members of his family and died an early death the same year that Dr. King came to Columbia. As we honor Dr. King and the push for equity in education, we honor the poor families of Clarendon County, South Carolina, who filed a lawsuit for better schools in a case called Briggs versus Elliott. But as we remember them, we remember those here in Columbia who supported them. A young preacher named Joseph Delane, who once lived on Taylor Street. An NAACP named Majeska Simpkins, who lived on Pine Street. An educator named Walker Solomon, who lived on Millwood Avenue. And a Baptist preacher, an insurance agent, who lived in the 1200 block of Height Street. His name was the Reverend James Hinton who even when attacked and kidnapped by the Klan in the 1950s, he kept on pushing for civil rights. As we honor Dr. King today, the leader of the Montgomery bus boycott, we travel down Green Street across Millwood to the 1100 block of Page Street. And there was an empty lot. But in 1954, in that empty lot, there was a house a house where a young 19-year-old woman named Sarah Mae Fleming lived. She was originally from Eastover. But in June of 1954, Sarah Mae Fleming boarded a bus to go to work in Shandon. And she sat down in the first available seat, a seat reserved by law for white people. The bus driver demanded that she move and go to the back of the bus she said, not today. She decided to get off that bus 
rather than suffering indignity. And as she tried to get off the bus, she was beaten by the bus driver. Sarah Mae Fleming filed a lawsuit called Fleming versus SCENG. And that lawsuit unraveled segregation on buses in Columbia 17 months before Rosa Parks. We honor Sarah Mae Fleming today. As we honor Dr. King, the prophet of a new awakening, we honor students throughout Columbia who joined the caravan of civil rights workers. We traveled to the 1100 block of Oak Street, and there was a White House, the home of Simon Bowie. We traveled to Laurel Street, there's a two-story house, the home of Talmadge Neal. We go to the 1400 block of Height Street, where once lived Milton Green. We travel along Marion Street, across from old Booker T. Washington High School, and there lived a woman named Maddie Johnson, who's here today. All of these students, in March of 1960, protested segregation. They all were arrested and convicted. And in 1964, the United States Supreme Court overturned the convictions of young people right here in Columbia, South Carolina. As we honor Dr. King today, we go down Green Street and go to the corner of, of, of College and, and, and Oak. There's now a high-rise building called Arrington Manor. But in 1960, there was a Methodist minister named Reverend I. D. Quincy Newman who lived in this community. And on a Friday in July of 1960, Reverend Newman and his child and four other students from C.A. Johnson High School decided they wanted to have a picnic. On the day before, they looked across the street and they saw white kids in this park. They also knew that there was a policeman who carried a shotgun who chased away the black children. But in July of 1960, they came across the street. They came with a picnic basket and a blanket. And they had a sit-in right here in Valley Park. And they stayed until the police chased them away. As we honor Dr. King, we honor a generation of people of this community who simply looked across the street and knew if they even came across the street or touched the grass on this park, they would be arrested. As we honor Dr. King today, we honor all the foot soldiers and all the members of the grounds crew. We honor Benjamin Mack, Oliver Washington Sr., two men who on April the 3rd, 1968, they invited Dr. King to speak here in Columbia at the Zion Baptist Church. The day before, they received a telegram that said, regrettably, Dr. King is delayed in Memphis, and he will join you at another time. April 3rd, 1968, he was supposed to be in Columbia, and on that night, he gave his final sermon. He said, I may not get there with you, but we as a people will get to the promised land. I may not get there with you, but we as a people will get to the promised land. On April 4th, Dr. King was killed in Memphis. A few days later, his mentor, a man named Dr. Benjamin Mays, gave his eulogy. And he said, Dr. King's work on earth must truly be our own. Dr. King's work on earth must truly be our own. Every year, we have programs like this. Every year, we honor Dr. King. But what will we do tomorrow? What will we do 
next week. Dr. King's work on earth must be our own. One last person. I work at the University of South Carolina. My office is on the other side of Green Street. And periodically, I would travel down Green Street, past this park. I would turn left on Oak. I would pass the home of a leader of this community named Durham Carter. And then I would get to Pendleton, and I'd turn right on Pendleton. And my car parked in front of 2310 Pendleton Street. And there the professor went to meet the real professor. There I went to meet a woman named Donella Brown Wilson, a teacher, an activist. And I would sit down and listen to her. I sat down and listened to her to the very end, till she was 108 years old. And she said, Dr. Donaldson, there's a problem with you all. And I said, Ms. Wilson, what's the problem? She said, there's too much teaching in the textbook. Our history should not be in the textbook. It needs to be in your heart and in your mind. In your heart and in your mind. She says, history has no purpose unless you use it. And I've been using it since 1946, never missing an election. History has no purpose unless you use it. So my brothers and sisters of Columbia, if you want to honor Dr. King, then use this history. Use it as we raise our children and teach our students. Use this history as we demand better schools, better wages, and better health care in this country. Use this history. as we speak truth to power and blow the trumpet against wrong, use this history as we challenge and tunnel through every wall of separation and division in this country. Use this history. If this history matters, then let us honor Dr. King, George Elmore, Ella Baker, and Donella Wilson, and use this history to secure, protect, and exercise every blood-stained right to vote in this country. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. King said the time is right to do right. We use this history and reflect in closing on Dr. King's last publication. He was perplexed about where the future would go. He was uncertain. It was 1967. The book was entitled, Where Do We Go From Here? Community or Chaos? That is the question. These are his words. He said, many of the ugly pages of our past have been deliberately obscured and forgot. A society is always eager to cover up misdeeds with a cloak of forgetfulness. But no society can fully repress an ugly past when the ravages persist right now. Our country owes a debt of justice which it has only begun to pay. If it loses, the will to finish or slackens in its determination. History will recall its crimes. And the country, the country that would be great will lack the most indispensable element of greatness, and that is justice. This is our history. This is our story. This is our legacy. Let's use it for when we all get together. What a day.
of rejoicing it will be when we all, Shandon, Millwood, Waverly, the University of South Carolina, the City of Columbia get together when we sit down by the banks of a creek in Valley Park. We'll sing and shout the victory. Thank you very much. Such inspiring words, encouraging words. Let, let's give Dr. Donaldson another round of applause. Come on, you can do better than that. You can do better than that. In the absence of the chair of the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Foundation Committee, Henry Baskins, could not be here today. Uh, so I'm going to take a moment to provide some acknowledgments. Um, I'm certainly not going to speak because it's hard to speak after such an amazing speaker. So it's not nothing that I can say to follow those words. But I want to take a, just a moment to acknowledge, in his absence, Mayor Steve Benjamin for his leadership and support for the city of Columbia. He has done awesome work in this city, and we're grateful for the work that has been done and the work that will be done. Again, we want to thank our city council who is with us today. As Mayor ben Benjamin, Benjamin acknowledged earlier today, uh, we have Mayor Pro Tem Tamika Isaac Devine with us on today. Would you mind standing, please, ma'am? We have Councilman Sam Davis with us today. We have Councilman Will Brennan, present with us today. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Councilman Howard Duvall, who is with us today. <laughs> Councilman Daniel Rickenman, present with us today as well. <laughs> Councilman Ed McDowell, thank you all so much for your presence on today. A special thanks to uh, the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Foundation Committee, all those who work on the committee, as you see in your program, the names are listed, but I would like for them to stand uh, and be recognized at this moment. All those who are part of the Dr. Martin Luther King Foundation Committee, please stand. If you're standing already, raise your hands to be acknowledged. Thank you. Thank you so much. I see some of them in the back. A lot of hard work was put into this program, so we want to acknowledge them. Uh, as well. Uh, again, a, a special thanks to uh, Dr. Donaldson, who has served over 20 years at the University of South Carolina and representing us well. Thank you so much uh, again for being here today. We also want to recognize our MC for this hour, Whitney Sullivan. Thank you so much for your presence on today and all that you have done. Uh, for us today. I just want to again say thank you to everyone who has particip participated in, in this program. There's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes that you may not see, but we recognize you as well. So thank you so much for your commitment and your passion to make this happen and for it to be done out of a spirit of excellence. So thank you so much again, to all who participated. On the back of your program, 
there is words to a song. And I'm going to ask everyone to stand. I am not a singer at all. So I, I will need, my wife is here today and she knows that she's laughing. Um, I need your help uh, on this song. I would ask that we all begin it together. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. Thank you so much. I do want to take a moment to acknowledge some reps from Elizabeth Warren's campaign. Um, I believe Leslie Mack is here with us today. Um, Keisha Haston, Paige Ingram, and Tracy Cordor is here with us today. We want to acknowledge their presence on today. Let's give them a hand for being with us. And at this moment, we'll receive the benediction and we'll give some direction on refreshments. If you'll stand, if you're not standing, as we pray and receive the benediction. Father, we thank you for being with us throughout the celebration. Your presence has been in this place since the beginning, and for that we are grateful. Lord, as we leave this place, let us put into practice what we have heard and learned of today. Help us, Lord God, to make a difference in the lives of others in the community and in this world. Now we ask that this food that has been prepared, bless it, so it may be used to nourish and strengthen our bodies as your word nourish and strengthen our soul. In his name we give